How to Boxing. We got a special guest today, Cam F. Awesome, four-time national Golden Gloves champion, six-time U.S. national champion, seven-time ringside world champion, and multiple-time international champion representing Team USA. So welcome, Cam. Hey, thanks for having me, Coach. All right, so let's get into it. I, you know, I invited you on because I know you have a lot of wisdom both in the boxing ring and outside of the boxing ring to share with our listeners. And I just want to start back to day one when you very first walked into the gym. Um, what'd you, where was that at and why'd you walk in there? Uh, I was 16 years old living in uh, Long Island, New York. Okay. I was going to Uniondale High School and... Uh, joined Kennedy Park Boxing Gym in Hempstead, New York. And the goal was just to uh, to kind of lose weight in hopes to get a date for prom. And uh, and it turned into just like this whole beautiful thing that's become my life. All right. All right. So it started out weight loss. Um, and just weight loss, just day. trying to, yeah. And, and it, I was, it was, there was bullying involved too. And I thought if I, if I were to lose weight and like look like a boxer, people would stop picking on me. Uh, and then also if I was buff, I would get a date to prom. So it was like a two for one deal. Okay. I right, well, win, win. No, win. You took a bad thing and turned it into something good. Well, well, I, I, I didn't get a date for prom. So then yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I got well, friend zone. I went with a friend. Okay. Well, it's still, um, at least you got to go to prom. Yeah. It sounds like I'm not over it though. All uh, right. All right. So now what happened after, um, after you you uh, started out with just the weight loss goal, at what point did you say, hey, you know what? I actually want to have a fight. And what was that like? Uh, I was, <clears throat> I was like, I was, I was going to the gym every day. It was five days a week. I, I was going weekends too. So six days a week, I didn't miss a day. I would like go running before school started, go to school and go straight to the boxing gym after. I lived boxing but I had no interest in sparring or getting hit or anything like that. I was just going to hit the bag and jump rope. I got real good at jumping rope. That was my thing. But then one day uh, they point out, they're like, Hey Cam, you've lost all the weight. You like, you came to lose weight. You lost all the weight. Do you want to spar? And I was like, Oh, my mom won't let me spar. <laughs> and everyone laughed. I was like, just joking. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a mouthpiece and I, 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 I sparred the next day. I didn't tell anyone in my family. I actually had my first four fights before anyone in the, in my house knew I was a boxer. Are you serious? You had I was, four fights. I was so afraid to, to tell people that I was a boxer because in my head, I never saw myself as a boxer okay. and I thought people would make fun of me. So I didn't tell and I told, I just, my brother, I told that I was, I was fighting, but I didn't tell my sister, didn't tell my dad, didn't tell my mom. And your brother, he kept friends. the secret. Your brother kept the secret. Yeah. yeah. He came to one of the four fights. He came to the first one. Okay. Now, yeah. when did your mom and dad, when did your family finally find out? Like, don't tell me it was when you were on TV winning U.S. nationals or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, ca I came home with, with a, with a swelled up eye. Okay. Yeah. And then, then it's like, oh, I've been, I've been sparring. But I had already okay. fought four times by that point. Okay. Now, were those first four fights, were they still up in New York? Or was this when you moved to Florida? Uh, this was up in New York. Okay. This, this was up in New York. But uh, during my senior year in high school, my parents moved down to Florida. And uh, I moved down there with them. And when I got down there, I decided, because in New York, I wasn't a very confident person. But I decided I could start over fresh. I could be whoever I want. So I changed from Cameron to just Cam and I had everyone just call me Cam and I was this cool dude and I was real confident and I pretended like I knew everything about boxing and I lived boxing and I had really just started like the year before, but no one in Florida knew that. And, and uh, you were playing that New York card, right? I'm from New York, man. <laughs> yeah. Real hard. Like, like I was cool in New York. I wasn't. I wasn't. Right. And it worked for you, though. You were able to pull it off. Yeah, yeah, I, I was able to pull it off, and that that kind of the the, the fake confidence uh, kind of led me to 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 become who I am because I I I faked the confidence so much I was worried I was like well 
I got to work out really hard to back up all this talk I'm doing. Uh, and I felt like I, because I'm not naturally gifted, I have to work out harder than everyone else. Okay. Uh, but it never translated in that way to most people because uh, I trained unconventionally. Uh, I, I, I think tradition stunts growth mm -hmm. and we don't ask ourselves, hey, why are we actually doing this enough? Uh, so I had a very strict routine of not having a routine. So with Team USA, they would try to wake me up at 6 a.m. to go running. Coach, people go running at 6 a.m. Like people go running really early in the morning before they go to work. I don't have a job to go to. Right. I'm not waking up to go run at 6 a.m. It's silly. Why? They once told me the air is clearer. The air is not more clear at 6 a.m. than is it. Pollution doesn't go away through the calendar <laughs> day. Uh, How also, does that I, work out in camp? I know we have some old school Team USA coaches out there. Uh, I bumped heads with everyone. Okay. Every single coach. Because here's the thing. I realized that I was mentally good at boxing. Like, and I, I can do it as long as I got to do what I, I needed to do. So I would, I, all I did was I ran and I sparred. I okay. rarely even hit the back, but I would spar everyone in the gym from, from 120 pounds, up, guys, girls, doesn't matter. And that's how I worked on my defense. And that's how I was able to be so comfortable in the ring because I've seen everything. I'm always in there. Right. So come fight time, there's a guy who's 250 throwing a punch. Mm, there's nothing he can throw that I haven't seen coming. Right. So it looks easy to me. But when you go to training camp with Team USA, you have to be a part of a team. Right. With the schedule, a very full schedule. Yeah. Very. <laughs> and I didn't join a team sport, coach. Right. So that, that was difficult for me to adjust. You know, the one thing you mentioned is, is something I do – similar as far as having punches and that's where i think fighters need more is um i put fighters in what i call the phone booth and the phone booth is simply a corner they're in the corner and i have a guy throw the most common punch coming at you which is a jab and we become masterful at parrying slipping blocking the jab that it becomes instinctive just to deal with that jab and so now the most common punch coming at your face you're very comfortable with and I think that accelerates confidence because you're very comfortable with shots coming at you. And I think that's why a lot of guys get tired because they're unconfident and they're so tense when shots start coming at them because they don't have those repetitions in. And by doing multiple rounds in the corner, it's kind of like um, really where I learned this from was a, a, a baseball coach told me, you want to get your kid good at baseball? He said, get those little wiffle balls. He said, you can throw a hundred of those and, and get more batting practice in, instead of throwing a baseball and chasing it all over the field, you get more reps. And I said, well, how can I do that with my fighters in the gym? And I thought, you know what? If I take away their legs, they can't move. I put them in a corner and I have jabs coming at their face. They're going to get more reps in per round. And so you kind of did that in a different way, but with the sparring. And it definitely yeah. worked for you. I mean, you won so many national championships. Yeah. You probably can't even remember or add them all up. <laughs> Yeah, and you're saying those corner drills. I hate those corner drills. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. But they work. It gets you comfortable. And what I think a lot of people they get too flinchy because mm -hmm. they're too tense. Uh, Got to be relaxed. So, yeah, but I always dread. I those are one of the things I dread. But uh, uh -huh. you know the the one other thing about you as a boxer, Cam, you. You know, you have this unique style. And I know in the Netflix, um, you got to tell me the title again. You're, I know you're Counterpunch. Counterpunch. Um, I remember Clarissa Shields was talking about it. And I know it wasn't just Clarissa Shields. I mean, even in local gyms like I ran and, you know, different coaches, we would see this guy, Cam Awesome, and we'd say, like, okay, he wins. Okay, but don't pattern yourself because <laughs> you're going yeah. against everything that 
that these, you know, old school coaches are teaching in the gym, everything's Listen. different. You remind me of like Nassim Hamad, um, Hamid, Prince Nassim. Prince Nassim. Yeah. You know, so tell us about that. And then let's get into the, the real secret sauce because you always found a way to win. And that's you, we can't dispute that, and we got to respect that. You found a way to win. Yeah, uh, I'll start this by saying uh, fundamentals are crutches for the untalented. That was okay. Kenny Powers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't have many fundamentals when it came to boxing. When I, when I explained, like when I first got to the boxing gym, uh, I was there for fitness. Uh, okay. So I was there just to hit the bag and jump rope. I could do tricks when I jump rope. That was my only interest. Uh, but then I, I I would just watch other fighters and I would just pattern what they did. So the way everyone stood, I stood as well, which I turn, turns out I'm left-handed. I should have been standing the other way. But these are things you learn on your journey. But uh, one of the things that, that I would do is like, uh, if I saw a guy hitting, this, hitting the heavy bag and I saw him hitting it like body level, I would see guys hitting it hitting the heavy bag way too low. And I'm like, oh, it's because they're lazy. So I would walk up to the heavy bag and touch my face on it. So I would just, that's where I would jab at that face line. Because it's real easy to get lazy and, and punch real low. But those are things I've learned, but I just kind of made up my style because no one ever spoke to me about boxing. I've never watched it before. I never, uh, I didn't really understand the sport. I just understood if I don't get hit, I can win. Uh, so okay. that was kind of like my philosophy throughout it. Okay. So, I mean, definitely you had that part right. Um, I teach fundamentals, so I'm going <laughs> to disagree with that to a oh, degree. I to want, a degree. And that's a uh, fundamentals or crutches for the untalented is a line from a movie. Okay. Uh, but it's Kenny Powers. Yeah. All right. So I teach I teach fundamentals because I know the, and, you and should. The, the reason why Cam is is because see I think that there's gifted athletes like a Muhammad Ali who ruins a generation of fighters afterwards wow. because they they try to act like him and they don't have those same athletic there gifts is that one he has. LeBron James. I said, there is one LeBron James. Mayweather ruined so many fighters. He did. He did. I, I see. I used to fight guys doing this, and I'm just throwing double jabs to their face. <laughs> right. I'm just like, only he can pull that off. If right. You were if you were good enough to pull that off, you would have won nationals last year. But guess right. what? You're not even at the regional level yet. If you're still right. at Golden Glove States, why don't you bring some fundamentals to the table? Yeah, let's get the hands up. Let's start with that a um, little bit of protection, maybe, you know, and, and that's something that, you know, because I think this, if I always teach this, there's holes in people's defense and it, we fill those holes with punches. And so we want to, I mean, if you come out and you're giving me the hole, I mean, I'm going to hit you with the right hand all day. Every oh. time you go to throw a jab, the right hand is there. Yeah. And, and I, you're saying the double jab. And if you're rolling, okay, all I got to do is put a feint in front of it. Now you roll. Yeah. Now now I catch you. Yeah. It's Those are my favorite people to fight. It Like, th this looks good in a picture. It looks great <laughs> in a picture. Right. Oh, it looks good in a picture. But that's about it. That's right. about it. But it, it don't look too good when that, yeah. when that leather yeah, the is smashing is, your face uh, in. Another problem that people have is they can get away with it at the level they're at at the lower levels yeah so they're, they're at states they're at regionals they're, even at nationals they can get away with that but once you get to that higher level and mm -hmm. then it's no, it's no longer your natural ability everyone there has natural ability right they also have experience right so it's like you can't get away and with the, those the iq is much higher they know how to faint they know how to get you out of position knock you out of balance hit your arm hit your chest then come after your head. You'll say that they're fighting dirty. The ref won't see any of it. Nope. And I honestly, I think a lot of just international experience with the um, with the uh, Team USA, you know, is is sometimes. And I think maybe it could be changing now. But a lot of times, I think we'd be too clean, like too clean, and not get rough enough competing internationally. I don't know what your take on that. 
Uh, so in the U.S., I love the fact that uh, that it's clean because my thing I used to do if if because I always fight on the outside, mm -hmm. I was always giving up 30, 40, 50 pounds sometimes. Uh, so if anytime a guy tied me up on the inside, I would just let my legs give out and I'd fall to the ground. And then the, 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 the ref would break because it's always got to be clean. So start over fresh. And the reason why I would do that is I'm not going to stand there and tussle with you. Right. You've got 40 pounds on me. It's not going to do me any good. Uh, but the refs allow it. So I take advantage of everything. And that's a part of the game. Right. Right. As far as international, what's the difference there for these young fighters coming up once they get to that Team USA level or, or represent their own country, depending on where they're at, and they're competing international? Talk to uh, these young fighters about the difference once you're making that move. Uh, two ways to look at it. One way, those people don't matter. They got two hands just like you. Mm -hmm. The other way to look at it, is it's just, it's a different style. Some guys are very bouncy and they have their hand out here. And a lot of them throw looping shots. And, and a lot of my style, uh, I took back from international competition. A lot of my check hooks and the, the, those things I do, I learned that internationally. Mm -hmm. And I do that here with, with a guy who's never left the country. And he's never saw the type of punches coming at him. Mm -hmm. He's never had the sparring to prepare for that. So what you need to do is watch film and actually study what you're doing. Some people think it's okay to just kind of get by with what you're doing, but the more you invest in your craft, the more you're going to get out of it. Oh, no doubt about it. And let's, let's get into this, Cam, because you, you're a winner, and I think it comes back to your mindset. So share with these young fighters about that. How did you develop that winning attitude, the winning mindset, and how can they do it for themselves? Uh, I believe that thoughts are things. Uh, and I believe that, uh, I believe that first of all, you have to believe that you can. And the only way to believe that you can is through discipline. Now, and what I mean by that is like, when I work really hard, and it, it's it's not to just do it physically, it's so I can mentally be stronger. And what I do is I, I tell myself that I'm going to win. Uh, and I do everything in my power to win. I sacrifice everything. I don't party. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I do everything that I can in my power to win. And if the fight is won before the bell has rung, I shouldn't have to be worried about the fight because I did everything there is to do. And that's why I can flip into the ring. That's why I can smile because I know in my head that I'm going to win. I put that out in the universe and I'm very confident it's going to be there. When I do lose, I cry out of confusion because I genuinely believe that I was supposed to win. There are three people in the ring. Two of them aren't going to win. I don't want to be one of them. Mm. So uh, I believe if you do everything in your power to, to, to win, you'll be just as confident as I am. There you go. There you go. Hey, Cam, so throughout your career, tell us the most challenging fight you've ever had and just why why it was so challenging and maybe what you learned from that fight. Uh, give you, I'll give you one example. Uh, it was my first international fight. It was in Reno, Nevada in like 2008, 2009. And I was fighting the, uh, the gold medalist uh, Olympian. And turns out he wasn't just a gold medalist Olympian. He was one-time gold medalist Olympian, one-time silver medalist Olympian, and one-time bronze and medalist Olympian. He went to three Olympics and medaled at all three of them. Who was the fight? Uh, Who was this? Roberto Camarelli. C Cuba. Uh, no, no, uh, it's Italy. Oh, Italy. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, I was at my cockiest. This is, I just won my first national championship. To me, I was, this is, I literally thought I was one of the best boxers to ever have lived at this point. I was like 19, very cocky. And uh, the bell rung, I got in there in the middle and then I'm looking at him dead in his eye. 
And then I got hit twice, but I didn't see his hands move at all. Oh. And I was like, I just remember thinking, uh-oh. Like, <laughs> it was like he knew something. That it was like it was it was like he was almost teleporting. His punches teleported because I didn't see it coming and I didn't see it, I didn't even see the punch coming back. Uh, that was a long fight. That was a very long fight. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what I learned was I learned that there's levels to this. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a good lesson to learn, especially uh, at that once you got to that level. Now, I know you were in three different Olympic squads coming through. Every four years, we have a new squad coming through trying to make the Olympic team. I know you've won the, I believe you won the Olympic trials two times. And I know you've been in camp and are friends with many of today's world champions. Um, share some of those of who you've who you've been with and, and maybe even a lesson if you have a lesson from one of them um, that would benefit our listeners. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the world champions will be one of my closest friends, Franchon Cruz. She's the WBC Women's uh, Champion. Uh, she's one of my closest friends. What she taught me was how to hustle. She is, she is, uh, she's such a talented person because not only was she fighting, she was sewing outfits because she like makes the, the uh, like boxing outfits for professional mm -hmm. fighters. She sings national anthem. She made it on American Idol and she was doing all this while still boxing and being a world champion. And wow. seeing that level of like work ethic and also being a woman, no one, no one cares. Like it's like, she doesn't get the, the, the praise that she deserves. Like, you know, the uh, female fighters, they don't get the, 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 the big purses that the men get. Mm -hmm. So it's like, she's doing all of this just out the love of the game. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of see her rise, that, that just reminds me that like, oh, I, I got to set my game up at all times. Right. Right. Now, I know you've been in camp and I know you've roomed with this, this fighter. And I'm sure our listeners today will be familiar with him. He has a big fight coming up against Manny Pacquiao. So Errol Spence, what can you tell us about? Errol Spence, um, and just kind of how long were you guys, you know, on that same Team USA squad together, and what was that like? Uh, I believe it was uh, two or three years, uh, and uh, we we're roommates for most trips because I believe uh, I believe he also liked the AC in his room very cold, and okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm very particular about things. Like, I don't care about a lot. I don't care about jewelry, cars, clothes, any of that. I just need it to be really cold when I sleep. Okay. And, uh, and and he was okay with that. So he was a great roommate. Right. Uh, I, I'm I'm definitely an Errol Spence fan, and in that fight, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with the truth. All right. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, one thing you've learned that someone else could learn from him. This about uh, him as he, a first, he, as a fighter. As a fighter, he is the one of the most well-rounded uh, fighters I've ever been in the ring with. And I've sparred with him, and granted, I'm significantly heavier than him, so we're just playing around. But uh, I do a lot of the, the feints and the moves and a whole bunch of silly stuff that tricks most guys easily. Uh, he didn't bite on a single thing. Uh, he is he's one of the most well-rounded individuals I've ever been in the ring with. Is his boxing IQ is second to none, and the fact that he got into a car accident came back and took a big fight off the bat to let y'all know that he ain't be, he ain't want to be playing with. Yeah. 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 He's the yeah, truth. That, yeah. that man is the truth. Cause, <laughs> cause what, what could you say that would be against him being the truth? I don't believe he's had a close fight. I don't think he's had a split decision. Uh, I, I don't, mm -hmm. the dude's just been since, since, since walking down Kell Brook, like, yeah, I'm, how can you not be a fan of EJ? Right, right. So, I mean, exciting fight. It's, it's going to be an exciting fight. It's also, I do like Manny out. Pacquiao. And okay. no, there's no disrespect to Manny Pacquiao yeah. because that man is, you know, actually, you know what I like most about fighters uh, more than them fighting? I'm more interested in what they do outside of the ring. Yep. 
I realize every time I talk about a fighter, I don't really mention anything they do in boxing. I'm just like, what they do out. And then Manny Pacquiao, I think about the reason why I like him is he's like, he's singing, dropping albums, running for office, like doing comedy and still being a world champion. Right. Pretty, pretty impressive. He's such a classy guy. He is. You know, one thing I always tell fighters is you're going to spend more of your time um, not as a fighter, not not exchanging leather anymore than you would um, than you will as a fighter in your life, in a lifespan, unless you have a tragic early death, you know, um, the likelihood is you're going to spend more time out of the ring, you know, than you will in the ring. And so I always try to encourage people to prepare for that and have a vision of what does that look like? Who do you want to be out of that, out of the ring, you know, when you're done? And I know you've, you've worked on that yourself and you've, um, I don't know if you recreated is the right word, but you went from being the top U S heavyweight for almost a decade or maybe a decade. Um, and then you've recreated yourself as a professional speaker and, you know, celebrity speaker. Tell us about that transition. Uh, so first of all, most people who get into boxing, if we're being frank about it, boxing is a poor man sports in a lot of inner cities. It's usually a ticket. Dudes are looking to get out of the situation they're in and make some money. Uh, and I, I do see that as an important part, but what I saw boxing as is not as a way to make money, but I saw boxing as a platform for me to be able to do other things. Uh, and, and I urge all athletes, no matter whether it's boxing, whether it's basketball, whether you're in high school, college, just know like you have a platform as an athlete, use that platform to the best of your ability. You have a privilege, you have athlete privilege. And it and doesn't matter what it is, it, even if you're in high school and you're, the, you're on the basketball team so you get extra tutors, well, take advantage of that if it's given to you because once you're no longer an athlete, your relevancy dries up faster than the sweat on your jersey on the last game. So don't think people are going to be there to help you because you're an athlete because once you're, once you're done with that, you're going to have to fend for yourself. So use the platform you have now and the resources at your fingertips and the favors you have dealt for you to kind of build your future for after sports. And you never know when after sports is going to be. Very true. Injury, any, anything could happen. So, most definitely. Well, Cam, it's been a pleasure having you on today. Um, I do want to talk real briefly about your professional speaking business and your topic and just as important in its importance in society today with the cultural biasness and the topic and kind of who you serve. Because I, I know every all of our boxing community, we have contacts, we know people. Um, and I think you could definitely help in those arenas that you serve. So just tell us a little bit about your business and then how people could contact you if they have a lead for you or if they have someone they want to introduce you to to, to help grow your business. Okay. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, and I would love to come back on another time. Absolutely. Uh, we'll definitely have you back. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> uh, so I'm a, I'm a diversity speaker and I was speaking to educators to help create better multicultural educators because 79% of educators are white, but not all students are white. So a lot of time there's a cultural miscommunication that goes on. Uh, so I, I help educators become better multicultural educators. And I do this with corporations, with any organizations. But I remember speaking to a group of educators and I realized how uncomfortable we are around the topic of race. And not just white people, but everyone. And it's because we never have these conversations. And I'm, leaving, I'm leading these diversity trainings and I'm talking to adults like children on elementary terms. And I realized that we're talk I'm talking to adults like children because we never speak to children when they're children. Mm. And I realized there's a big gap missing in communication because it, are we using school to adequately prepare our students for the future? Because if they don't know anything about culture or how to effectively 
have any cultural competence communicating effectively with other cultures, how awkward are they gonna feel once they get to college and they have a roommate from Vietnam? Right. Are we preparing our students? So uh, I, I see there's a need for that. And I think I'm, I'm one of the world's greatest youth diversity speakers because I don't think anyone's talking to the students about this. Right. So uh, uh, that's kind of been my mission. I, I, uh, I've, I've always had the philosophy of serving and throughout my boxing career, where I've always been speaking, doing different things, and I've always been a big believer in serving. And uh, I found boxing has been a great thing for me, but right now my path has been uh, through serving, through, through speaking. Awesome, so we'll leave some contact information. Um, I know myself in our area, we had Cam as a speaker and he spoke to like, I, I wanna say six to eight different venues. Um, all the way from junior high schools to high schools to, to college. colleges. Yeah, he spoke at a couple colleges as well when you're here. And uh, and he's a dynamic speaker, incredible. And definitely, if you have contacts, um, reach out to him to help him spread his message and, and impact the world. And we'll definitely bring him back. It's been great talking to you today, Cam. Looking forward to your Thanks next visit. Coach. Let's get Thank it. you, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Cam Awesome. I'm a multi-time national champion boxer, multiple-time Olympic trials winner, and youth motivational speaker. I've teamed up with Team USA to travel around the country speaking at high schools and middle schools about the benefits of boxing and why boxing is the greatest metaphor for life. The top two things boxing has taught me. One, the definition of hard work. Like, Cam, how to teach you about hard work? Well, guys, I didn't know what hard work was until I got punched in the face for not working hard enough. If he can share all of his failures and still keep trying, uh, it's just inspirational for me to keep trying no matter what I do. And the second thing it taught me was the importance of resilience. Because if you can fail without being discouraged, success becomes inevitable. You know, it's just really inspirational to see that someone who gave up one time and then decided never again can achieve like what they really wanted to do. I believe in setting big goals, so I'll share something with you. I'll share my tree. You're probably like, Cam, why does your tree have three different fruit? Because my tree's a baller. If I had to choose a fruit, I would go with that fruit. And the reason being is it's the hardest one to get. But if I get close and I fail, I still have an option at every other fruit on the way down. Because if I fail at it, I'll just try again. My favorite part was just watching him smile and the humor he put into it while talking about something so heavy as all his failures was just really inspiring seeing how he's taken all that and turned it around. I became not the third, not the second, but the first boxer in United States history to be suspended and kicked off the Olympic team for not filling out paperwork. Yeah. When I'm getting too stressed out, I'm feeling really frustrated and I would like to quit. I just lie to myself, set goals big enough to fail and then lie to yourself on why you didn't get there, fix it, and keep moving. I thought Cam did an amazing job at talking about his personal obstacles in life. No matter what he went through, he continued to strive for his goals. And I promised myself that I was going to find the positive side in anything that were to ever happen. I'm currently booking dates for the 2018-2019 school year, and I hope to be there to kick off your school year with a blast.